uh, Lauren London. That's you. Yeah, that's my girl. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so were y'all? How, how did y'all? Were you guys rolling? Did she look over at you? At Man, a I light? had done an interview years ago when I first came in the game, and I said I'm gonna get that girl. You know what I mean? And Damn. So, and then you know, how long from there? That was probably like oh nine. Hey man, oh, wow. you know so yeah, whatever like, plans oh, you have, you know exactly like I what stick you... to the script, man. Yeah, yeah man, you know get saying? it. Mm-hmm. Nah, but that one thing I noticed about myself when I when I like, uh, I think you know thoughts is powerful in yeah. all facets. Because even my career, even my life, you know things end up turning out exactly how I visualized them. Not right. not in this time frame I expected. You know what I'm saying? You always want shit to happen overnight, mm-hmm. but you know. I just had clear visions, you know, obviously outside of my girl. I just mean the music right, and, right, and right. hustling and just how I viewed myself as an adult when I was a young dude coming up. And uh, your thoughts powerful. That shit, you know, come to life if you stick to your script. Man. Hey, man. And, you know what I'm saying? Honey, I business. used to tell my mom, like, when cats, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I used right. to tell cats. I'd be like, man, when I'm, they're like, yeah, big, if you make it. I'm like, man, not if. Mm-hmm. When, I used to tell man, my if mom. If is when. I'm going to be, I told my mom, I said, mom, I'm going to be famous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and you got to think, man, we, we're homeless. We living in a motel. I'm like, mom, I want to be an actor. Yeah. And she went on and got me acting books. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And, and anybody else probably look at the kid like, man, shut your ass up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I always knew right. that something would, I always knew something was going to pop. No question. I always knew. And man. that's why it popped. Yeah, yeah. Because you knew yeah. it was going to pop. Hell yeah. It's about seeing long term, seeing a vision. Understanding that nothing really worthwhile happens overnight and just sticking to your script long enough to make something real happen. Laying a brick every day instead of trying to build a brick wall. Just lay a brick every day. Eventually you look up, you gonna have a brick wall. Main most important thing number one is you gotta get rid of doubt. If you got doubt in what you're doing, it's not gonna work. You know what I'm saying? And the way to do that is you have a plan. Cause if you got a plan, it's not like just a pipe dream. You have a step by step list of things to do to get to your goal. If you don't have that, it's very hard to really have faith in what you're doing. Because soon as something pop up, it's going to look like the end all. But if you got a game plan of everything you need to do, you know, one thing pop up, well, I still got to do this, 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 and that, so this ain't going to stop me. You know what I'm saying? Another thing pop up, well, shit, I accomplished this two things. I, since my last obstacle, I only got three more things to do. Let me keep pushing. Fuck it. Pretty soon you, you, you attain your goal, and then you create another one. But without a game plan and without a, a strong sense of faith in what you're doing, it's going to be real hard to accomplish anything. And I know, you know, there's a lot of obstacles out here. Family, baby mamas, the legal system, trouble with the law, you know, your homeboys being involved in a, in, in a crab in the bucket syndrome where, you know what I mean, you making moves and, and starting to make your way out. And people start trying to attach themselves to you and really become weight, you know what I'm saying, extra weight. And sometimes it's like kamikaze, they blow themselves up trying to stop you. So, you know, you just gotta, you gotta have faith in what you're doing and not take no for an answer and you'll get it. It'll be a long run, but you'll get it, for sure. Success to me, I say it a lot, it's just being able to do what you love to do and, and support yourself off of it. Live your dream and do what you love to do every day. So I'm successful in my eyes, because I don't sell dope, I don't go to work, but I do music and I love to do it. And that's all I had to do to maintain. Number one, you know, I just feel better, homie. I sleep better, you know what I mean? I just, I got a, a level of like, I'm at peace with what I'm doing. I feel good about what I'm waking up doing and about my lifestyle. At one point, I, mean, I, I wasn't proud of my lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I wasn't content with what I was doing on a day-to-day basis. I wasn't happy with that. So it was eating at me, even though I'd be on the surface, cool and straight. Deep down, I wasn't. I knew that this wasn't the direction of what I need to be doing. Now I wake up with the feeling that I'm going in the direction that I'm here for. Like what I'm on this planet for, I'm doing it. Right, right. Bigger than just the LA, bigger than some gang banging, bigger than some street shit, just some some, some human shit. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm here to do, I feel like. Basically before, before my deal and before I really had an outlet to get my music out, I was just full time hustling and part time rapping. Like I, I always had a passion for, for rap music. And I was always trying to create the situation to where I could, I, could, I could do this full time. We got turned down, we failed, had setbacks, had to start over a lot of times, you know, but we kept going at it. In anybody's case, that's always the distinguishing factor. I told myself in my head, like the main thing I told myself was like, sometimes you gotta take two steps back to take 10 forward. I mean, I gotta fall back from having my jewelry, you know what I mean, having my everyday money, riding around the hood on leather and chrome, smoking weed all day. 
calling the homies up. You got that for me for sure. Going to pick up 200 here, 500 here, 1,000 here, and that's my day. I had to, I had to let go of that luxury. Go back to being a young dude that was pinching every penny. Maybe he had twenty dollars a day to spend, ten on a sack of weed, ten to eat, just so I could stay creative and work. And it was, it was hard for my ego. And I was used to being that young fly nigga, take my pick of whatever female I want. At all the, all the parties, all the clubs, all the, the spotlight was on me. I did everything with my process, point A to point Z. I went out and, 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 and made the relationships with the producers. I took the music into my house, imported it into Pro Tools, graded the shit out, recorded myself, ran from the Pro Tools to the mic and back and forth, bounced it down, burnt it on CD, took it into the street, promoted myself, sold it myself, went into these meetings, articulated my vision to the label, signed the deal, put my first foot forward to the street with my mixtape series. This was all me. So if my engineer tell me, oh, we can't do that, I, I engineer my nigga, so you get out to see, let me take care of that. Or if my team say, oh, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. If you go to Queens or Manhattan or Brooklyn and you wanna go to every high school and surround their high schools and, and, and really do grassroots promotion, they end up, oh, that's not, gonna, that's not gonna connect. Well, you don't do it, then I do it, because I've done this and I know the effect it had. I realized I wanted to work for myself when I was about 11. I needed school clothes to go into the sixth grade with. And my mama gave me $40 to go school shopping and I couldn't buy shit. So I was like, you know, I'm not finna stress my mama out. I just gotta figure out how to get money. And I used to shine shoes at Chambers when I was like 11. I used to make like $90 a day, work six days a week. And I, I started to learn how to like hold my own. I explain mailbox money, Nip. Mailbox money is, you know, when you own an asset and you get the, you know, the, the income that the asset generates, we call it mailbox yeah, money. Man. You own real yeah, estate, you get mailbox just go money. To the, just go there and it's, yeah. it's, it's one waiting on you. Period. Like, oh, okay, yeah. hello. And if you, you own publishing, you write your own records, and you ain't sold your publishing, that's mailbox money. You get mm -hmm. your, you own your masters when them albums sell on iTunes, that's mailbox money. Yeah, man. And that's the, that's the business model of every major corporation that give advances. Yeah, yeah. They give advances to, 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 to participate in the, the income of your asset. Right. The mailbox money. So if we do, you know, move forward. But it'd be the right move for you. Yeah, they know and my philosophy. Dictate, they yeah. know my business model. I need to be involved as a partner. I need to be an owner. I heard and that. And they know that we ain't going to have convos if it don't start like that. Man. You, you remember us from early, big. You know what I'm saying? Just from in L.A. Before yes, we, we had too much anything going. And uh, we was always just, we ain't want to wait on nobody. You know, we was like, we're going to work with what we got for now. Yeah, man. We ain't going to just wait until it's going to be a platinum album, until we got a major label to spend a million on marketing. We're going to release music. And repeat the cycle and get bigger off just working with what we got. Hell yeah. And I, I just believe in hustling like that. You always got individuals that, you know, got fronted or, you know what I'm saying, borrowed or whatever. And you got the individuals that got it off the curb. I bought all equipment, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I started from scratch and just bought, you know, four studios worth of equipment because I got four rooms in my setup. Go ahead now. So we just, we just you know, invested heavily. Why we, was that necessary, though? You yeah. know, like, cats are like, man, you could, why not go anywhere else? Why do you feel like, man, you know what, I need to I need to build my own compound? Man, I just believe in ownership. Yeah. You know what I mean? I believe in, you know, um, investing in yourself. When you make money, you know, you could easily go a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like, you know, your foundation should be strong. Yeah, so <clears throat> the actual brand, the name of the brand, obviously, is the Marathon. And it just stands for endurance. It stands for staying down. It stands for like not quitting, accepting the ups and downs of whatever game you commit yourself to and riding it out. You feel me? Because, you know, that's the reality of, uh, you know, success or greatness that it come with a roller coaster ride, you know? So I think that anybody could apply the marathon concept to what they do if it's sports, if it's fashion, if it's music, um, if it's hustling, whatever. You're, just on, a you're on a marathon, you know? So. To make that the basis of our, you know, fashion line, um, I look at it like, you know, we honor the people that ain't quit. We honor the people that stay down. You know, it's just like a metaphor for being a long haul. Right. You don't judge it by one leg of the race, because if you judge me by my first leg, you'd have been like, you know, Nip the biggest dude on the West. Mm -hmm. And then if you judge me by the second leg, you might be like, Nip didn't drop an album and disappointed. But if you judge me by the third leg, you're going to be like, Nip an independent mogul. Yeah. But if yeah, you yeah, step yeah. back and look at it as a, as a marathon, you like, this dude came from, you know, single house family, a gangbanging environment, you know what I'm saying? Didn't graduate high school. Mm -hmm. 
and been through the bullshit of the streets of LA, the county jail, the bullshit mm -hmm. of just the traps that got set. And, you know, as a self-motivated hustler, turned it into this. Got my mind on a million foe, I turned 26. But that's just what it costs for that condo at the bridge. I got this European belt, belt, European bitch. Ever seen an African in the